My farm in Stevensville, Montana was 30 acres. Of that, six acres was in vegetable production and about a half an acre in orchard production. There was never any more than probably half that three acres in vegetable production at any one time. And I produced enough produce to go to farmer's market every Saturday and to sell wholesale. And I basically, between what I grew for myself and what I traded, was able to meet probably 75 to 80 percent of my food needs. I could easily have done more, but I was spoiled and wanted things like rice and corn chips and olive oil and herbs and spices that I couldn't grow. For a, a good, nutritious diet, I think, uh, I think I could have easily done it on an acre without huge inputs. I started farming with uh, living mulches and compost, clovers and uh, green manures and I moved towards the end of the 17 years away from using manure and doing more veganic kind of farming and hence I could raise my own fertilizer. So to do that, not all of the acre would be under production at any one time because I'd be raising, raising my own fertilizer. So I, I, I think I'm going to say about an acre. I'm reluctant to say that I could feed myself on less than an acre with a, a nice diversified diet and producing my own fertilizer. I think if you had 10 people, you would need perhaps only six or seven acres. We moved into this property March of 2006, so we've been here just over five and a half years now. And it was all lawn and a big 15 foot by 80 foot asphalt driveway when we moved in. I found a local tree trimmer that's about a mile from our house, and they were w very willing to drop off hundreds of loads of wood chips for us. For free. So all in all, we probably, over the years, have put down two to two and a half feet worth of wood chips. This site is a little bit different than most Portland lots in that it's part of the Missoula flood zone. Most of Portland in the Willamette Valley has heavy clay soils, but this area got uh, periodic rushes of silt and rocks coming down the Columbia River that got deposited here in back eddies. So we have much better draining soil, but it's full of lots of rocks. So when we moved in here and took a four-pronged pitchfork type thing, we could only stick it in the ground about that far before one of the tines would hit a rock. So very difficult to dig through, not much organic matter. Our grass was about that high at the same time that the grass in the vacant lot down the street was maybe two feet high. So that's a big part of why we wanted to bring in lots and lots of wood chips and organic matter from the start to build up the soil and enhance the water retention and nutrient holding abilities. But we have two tenths of an acre. It's a 50 by 180-ish uh, lot, which is a little bit bigger than your normal city lot, which is 5,000 square feet. Right. There, there's food growing on the house. There's an eco roof on the front porch, which is about 20 by seven. seven. It's got eight inches of soil. And then we have the new, the passive solar room on the back, the new addition. That's 30 by 13. 13. It's got six inches of soil, and then the carport and garage have eco roofs with really shallow soil, so they're just growing sedums. So basically we have a thousand square foot of eco roof in addition to the land. I want to say we have something like 5,000 square feet total of actual growing space once you subtract out the non-useful house parts, paths, hangout spaces, material handling zones, check and coop, woodshed, and storage shed in the backyard. I think it's about 5,000 square feet of actual growing space. And of like plants, specific plants that are edible or useful, I'd say like 98%. We have crocosmia, which is pretty, but we don't know of any edible uses for it. And, or, or medicinal. That's... And we just, probably 98% of the plants that we have here are edible, medicinal, or... I'd say 99.5%. Okay. Well, since April of 2010, we've actually been weighing everything that we harvest from the yard. And I've got a database set up that has the calories per pound of all the different food items. So I punch in how much of what we've gathered and I've 
got it programmed to spit out how many calories we're getting from everything. So we know that we're getting about 750 calories per day total from the yard. And so that's, for both of us, that's not 750 calories each. So at this point, we're feeding about a third of me or half of Tulsi. So if we're really trying to feed ourselves, one of us would have to eat the other, and that would only last so long. <laughs> Uh, long term, I think it's possible if everything lines up right, everything works out just right, we don't have too much weather disruption, which of course is not a very good uh, assumption to, to base any anything on at this point. We're kind of having that this year, in fact. <laughs> yeah, but if everything lined up right, I think you can maybe feed one person from this yard really sustainably, which means that all the food is actually coming from the yard, not importing resources from outside to feed the chickens or continually importing mulch from outside to keep building soil or bringing in fertilizer of any kind. And that doesn't really account for fuel wood to heat the house. I mean, I guess really, if I'm being wildly optimistic, then I could say that, yeah, we can also copy some stuff and get enough fuel wood to heat and cook minimally. But that's really all very best case. I think realistically, for planning purposes, to not get yourself into a bind of running yourself right up to the limit, I would plan that this site could feed about half of a person sustainably. So if you really wanted to feed somebody, you need to take over the next lot, kick out everybody except one person, and that would be enough to feed one person. So when I crunch the numbers for Portland, just kind of back of the envelope, what the city land area is and how many people are in it, if everybody did what we've done here, and did it better to the point where it's really firing best case scenario and keeping them not even accounting for the fact that what we did here doesn't really scale because we tapped into tons of trees that have been chopped down all over the city and basically compiled them right here to build up our soil not everybody is going to be able to do that but if you set that aside and figure everybody did what we did here the city would still have to get rid of half of the people who live here to really be able to feed itself so that was a real eye-opener for us this whole journey of seeing Realizing how naive we were when we moved in about what the realities of food growing are, and then learning more from experience about what it really takes, how much land it takes, and then extrapolating that to the city. And our conclusions are wildly different than many people want to say that Portland is sustainable and we can make it through the storm and all that kind of stuff, so we have different ideas about that. Some people who claim that they're growing all their food on their land, I wonder what type of resources they're bringing in as far as like chicken food or rabbit food or fertilizer to grow those five million pounds of <laughs> tomatoes or um, are they doing it in a closed system or is it an open system bringing in resources from the outside? And another point that Toby Hemingway makes a lot when this question comes up on uh, email lists online is that when people say they're growing most of their own food, what they usually mean is they're growing most of their own produce, their fruits and vegetables and berries. And those are all really important nutrition-wise. They give you lots of important micronutrients and so on, vitamins. But it doesn't provide calories. Um, that's one of the big things that I've realized with our process of weighing everything and seeing how many calories we're actually getting from foods is that we get tons of greens from the yard. And we really overplanted the perennial greens because they're really easy to do. and I had no concept of how many we really needed to eat and how much calorie value they had, but they have very little. So when we moved into this house, we were hoping slash expecting to be able to feed and house three to four people on the site sustainably long term. So we figured that we'd get water catchment set up to irrigate the yard and make the house uh, remodel it a little bit to make it convenient for three or four people to live in it and most importantly we thought that we'd be able to plant enough fruit and nut trees and keep chickens and maybe other animals for some meat and grow all the greens and veggies to feed those three to four people sustainably from the land. I did crunch some basic numbers and this is on my blog post years ago of a paleo diet self-sufficient um, land requirements of how much food you need to grow to feed yourself a paleo diet with 20% calories from eggs, 20% from meat, and the rest from plant foods. And I found that it would take about one and a half acres per person if you're being conservative. So that's with fruit trees over here, berries here, vegetables over here, chickens over here. So obviously if you integrate it all, you'll get uh, better stacking and can reduce the space somewhat. But I think 
really self-sufficiently and sustainably maybe three quarters of an acre to one acre per person down in San Francisco might be realistic so maybe you could feed two to three people the full diet from two acres um, so I remember when I came across David Bloom's blurb about feeding 200 some people from two acres down in San Francisco that I tried to look into it to get more details on what that actually meant and I couldn't come up with any hard information on like what kind of crops he was growing and whether he was talking about feeding them their full caloric diet or just feeding them their produce or whatever. The impression I got was that it was mostly a CSA oriented around vegetables and produce and so that goes back to what I was talking about earlier. Those aren't really calorie crops and so you're not... It, people use the term loosely of what feeding yay many people means. Mm -hmm. Does that mean dinner salad for 200? Or does that mean your full blown diet? Right. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about sustainability, homesteading, and permaculture all the time. Earlier, that's kind of an important piece of our whole 750 calories a day. About half of that is coming from animal products, meaning honey and chicken meat and eggs, pretty much. And I'd say about half of those animal product calories are probably coming in from off-site. So the chickens are getting probably half of their food from the worms that they find and the garden stuff that we throw them and the leaves that they're eating. Um, and the bees, of course, are foraging all around the place to bring in their honey. So of the 750 calories a day that we're getting from the yard, Probably about 175 to 200 of those are ultimately from off-site food coming in to feed the bees and the chickens. So really from on-site we're only giving ourselves 550-ish calories per day.